Hey guys, what's poppin'? It's me, the Banana, and welcome to part two out of uh, eight of the Wes Anderson series on my channel, where I review every single Wes Anderson movie, starting from Bottle Rocket all the way up to the Grand Budapest Hotel until he releases his movie in 2018. So today, you know, following Bottle Rocket, which I reviewed last week, Today comes his second film, and in my opinion, well, maybe even his best film, and that film is Rushmore. Rushmore follows the story of Max Fisher, a preppy 15-year-old attending Rushmore, a high-end school. Max succeeds at his extracurricular activities. He's the publisher of his school's newspaper, editor-in-chief of his yearbook, French club president, Russia in his school's United Nations, vice president of the Stamp and Coin Club, captain of the debate team, lacrosse team manager, president of the calligraphy club, founder of the Astronomy Society, captain of the fencing team, second chorale choir master, founder of the Bombardment Society, Yellow Belt in the Kung Fu Club, founder of the Trap and Ski Club, president of the Rushmore Beekeepers, founder of the Yankee Racers, director of the Max Fisher Players, part of the Piper Cub Club, part of Track and Field, and part of the Back Gammon Club. Also, he saved Latin. I saved Latin. What did you ever do? So while Max may exceed at those things, he doesn't do too well at his actual subjects, you know, math, science, English. So Max is on the verge of getting kicked out of school. One day, Max meets Miss Cross, the school's first grade teacher, whom Max falls madly in love with, so he tries to win her affection. But things get complicated when Herman, Max's friend, played by Bill Murray, becomes involved with her, setting them against each other for her attention. Now, I absolutely love Rushmore. In my opinion, this is Wes Anderson's best film, and I've seen all of his films. Sure, I'd say most of his films are amazing, but Rushmore will always hold that special place in my heart as my favorite Wes Anderson film. Rushmore, to me, just has everything. Eccentric characters, great costume design, great acting, great jokes, and an amazing soundtrack. Wes Anderson chose to fill his soundtrack with primarily British Invasion music from the 1960s. He has songs from Chad and Jeremy, The Creation, and The Faces, but he also has music from non-British Invasion artists such as Cat Stevens, The Kinks, John Lennon, and The Rolling Stones. As I said before, the soundtrack is absolutely fantastic. In an audio commentary I saw done by the Criterion Collection, Wes talked about how before production he had already planned out every single song he was going to use and each scene he was going to use the songs for. And it definitely shows in this movie. The songs match perfectly with the tone of it. There's also some excellent compositions done by Mark Mothersbaugh, who was actually part of the band Devo. Wes Anderson has turned me on to some really great music, and not just from this film. But anyway, enough about the soundtrack, the fantastic soundtrack. There's much more to love about this film than that. For me, what may be the best thing in this film is the character of Max Fisher, played by Jason Schwartzman. Now, Max Fisher is a character I can relate to so much. We're both sarcastic kids who don't really try to fit in and have different tastes in fashion than most people. By that I mean, like, I go to school dressed up in full-on suits. We're also more interested in the arts and less interested in boring crap such as math. Anyway, math is a very interesting character. He's often narcissistic and very obsessed with Miss Cross. He's so obsessed with Miss Cross, in fact, he gets kicked out of school for trying to turn his school's baseball field into a public aquarium for her. Another extreme display of his sour affection for Miss Cross is when it erupts into self-righteous disrespect when he meets her male friend from Harvard. I like your nurse's uniform, guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? Well, they're totally inappropriate for the occasion. Well, I didn't know we were going to dinner. That's because you weren't invited. Take it easy, Max. You were the one that ordered him a whiskey and soda. So what's wrong with that? I can write a hair play, why can't I have a little drink to unwind myself? So tell me, Curly, how do you know Miss Cross? We went to Harvard together. Oh, that's great. I wrote a hair play and directed it. So I'm not sweating it either. Can we get a check, please? That scene in particular is very hard to watch. And there are a couple scenes in this movie that you can't really watch without cringing. But enough about the main character, there are plenty of great supporting roles as well. One that immediately springs to mind is Max's dad, Burt Fisher, played by Seymour Castle. This is a character you immediately feel bad for. He's a barber who's constantly belittled by his own son, even though he's only trying to help him. Another great supporting character is Harmon Bloom, played by Bill Murray. But come on, when does Bill Murray not do a great job? 
the relationship between Herman Bloom and Max Fisher is very interesting to me, because it's not like Herman is a father figure to Max, which in most films of these types of relationships would have it be like. The funny thing is, it's pretty much vice versa in this film. Herman Bloom kind of looks up to Max in a way. Herman envies Max because Max kind of seems to have it all figured out. And that's one of the many things that works excellently in this film. I guess it's only right to talk about some of the phenomenal technical work behind this movie. First off, the colors displayed in this film are magnificent. The blues, the reds, the greens, it's really great and shows the start of Wes Anderson's very distinct style. Another great choice in this film on the technical side was the costume and set design. The costumes in particular are fantastic. Max Fisher always sports a stylish blazer and a snappy tie, and as the film progresses and Max changes, his outfits change, which is one of the genius things in this movie. The outfits kind of, in a way, represent how he feels when he's wearing them at different points in the movie. And just to let you know, I'm not making this up, it's not bullcrap. Wes Anderson actually does talk about this in the Criterion Collection commentary track. Now, I suppose if this is a review and I'm looking at it from a critical perspective, I guess I should talk about its flaws. And flaws are something this film lacks, for the most part. However, one of the things I think this film could have been... Actually, you know what? Forget it. Rushmore has no flaws. In my mind, it's one of the few perfect movies that exist. The acting, the characters, the costumes, the visuals, the soundtrack. Everything is fantastic. Rushmore is the film that made me say, yeah, I like this Wes Anderson guy. It's my personal favorite Wes Anderson film to date, and I would highly recommend it. And Rushmore is going to get a 10 out of 10.